All right, hi everyone. My name is uh, Danny Howdy I teach at uh, Whittier College in, in Los Angeles in the Studio Art Program. What I'm going to present today is, is actually a very basic um, and simple um, uh, idea here that I've just converted um, digitally. So it's basically just a, a reading worksheet that I think most people are familiar with, um, a bit old fashioned, but I decided to try it. Um, and try to get some new, new features out of something very basic and simple. So, um, just a little bit of background on, on the course. Um, this course is um, a sophomore seminar done for um, art majors and minors. It's a course titled uh, Seminar in Visual Thinking. And, and at Whittier College, we're undergoing kind of a, a, a strong attempt to increase student engagement in the sophomore year. We're noticing a few drops in retention in the sophomore year. So one of the ways we're trying to um, combat that is to uh, do more challenging sophomore seminars in the majors. So this is sort of the art department's version of that. Um, this course is sort of designed as a methods course um, in studio art. And I say methods in quotations because such a thing doesn't exist in art. Um, but I've tried to create it in that vein. So it's a, it's a course that basically asks basic questions. What is art? How do we define art? How do we make art? How do we interpret art? How does art circulate? So very basic questions that the, that the seminar asks. Um, it's the first, first uh, introduction to theory for the art majors. So a lot of times traditional art uh, courses or art programs are sort of skill-based, technique-based. This is how you paint, this is how you draw. Um, but there is a larger component about thinking about theory, thinking about the way that um, other disciplines influence um, the making and interpretation of art. So um, this seminar is very uh, interdisciplinary. So we read a lot of literary theory, we, we read psychoanalysis, we read a lot of really difficult um, texts. So what the students were doing in the previous uh, seminars were doing very, very shallow reading, if at all. Um, so they would come to class, and this is difficult stuff. Um, they would come to class, not prepared, and I would end up uh, spending most of the class time uh, trying to catch them up, you know, not good at all. Uh, so most of, the, most of the class time was spent trying to um, get them to understand the difficult material, which didn't really leave a lot of room for um, more sort of higher order thinking discussions, application, um, that kind of stuff. So I was really, really troubled by that. Um, previous attempts to, to deal with this um, were, were sort of failures. They were more punitive than educational. So I was doing um, uh, reading quizzes online before class started, which just was a total failure um, because uh, they weren't, a, a quiz wasn't really going to, uh, their, their comprehension of the material wasn't going to show up in a quiz. Um, and it ended up just really uh, bringing down their grades in a way that I just thought wasn't very fair. Um, and, and it wasn't educational. It wasn't helping them. I mean, it was just more sort of accountability. So I, I, I decided I have to do something different. There's got to be something different. So um, I decided to create um, these digital worksheets. Um, and they had three primary goals involved. Um, to use less, less class time uh, for comprehension of the material and more time to um, talk about the application. Um, the analysis, the evaluation. Two, to reshape uh, in-class discussions so that it was more student-centered. Um, I am a big believer that the, the, the instructor shouldn't work harder than the student. Um, I don't want to work harder than the students. Um, so a lot of times in the discussions, I was doing all of the work to sort of prompt the discussion, to keep it going. You know, I'm obviously, we're, I'm, I'm a professor. I'm going to do some of that. But uh, I, I'm a strong believer that, that it should be student-centered and that that's when the students are engaging the most. Um, and then three, just a larger goal was, was that the, the, I wanted the students to be prepared um, for more advanced um, art making and discourse. Because what, what we found is that before this seminar, by the time the, the seniors got to their senior seminar, we were having to do a lot of catch up on the bigger sort of concepts theory that they would then apply to their art making. So those were the three goals um, that I had in mind. So um, the design of the digital worksheet was um, I ended up using a Mo the Moodle questionnaire tool. So it's basically what I ended up doing was taking, in essence, creating a survey um, that the students would then um, fill out uh, 
the night before, the, usually the night before, but definitely before class, um, so that they'd be prepared for discussion. So I decided to use the Moodle questionnaire tool to do it um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I wanted it to be integrated with the Moodle gradebook. Again, I'm trying to work less. So um, the students would, would uh, fill out the questionnaire, and it would automatically be um, graded in uh, the Moodle gradebook, which I use very heavily. Um, it was easy to gather student input. So all of the information that the students were putting into the worksheet was easy for me to, get, uh, to gather and collect. And this is important when, we, when I talk about uh, a, a different aspect of the, of the worksheets, because this was a crowdsourcing um, uh, assignment. And this is one of the benefits of doing it digitally versus printing out a worksheet and having them fill it out and then hand it in um, during class. Um, this was low stakes points um, in terms of doing them, but it, like I mentioned before, it automatically uh, was integrated into the Moodle gradebook. They did it, they got points. If they didn't do it, they didn't get points. I would also um, occasionally, especially towards the end of the semester, check to make sure that they weren't just filling in random uh, you know, uh, words, that they were actually engaging with it, and if they weren't, then I would dock points, you know, that kind of thing. But um, th you don't have to use Moodle to do something like this. You can use Google Forms. You can use any sort of survey tool. I just chose the, the questionnaire tool in Moodle because it integrated very easily. And I'll show you, I'll show you a version of it in a second. Um, I wanted to incorporate high-order thinking skills whenever possible in the type of questions that I asked them to do. Um, and I also um, try to um, integrate the, the course outcomes in the questions that I asked uh, in, in the worksheet so that it was, um, so that everything was aligned in the course and that if I wanted to, I can use it for assessment as well um, because the outcomes were there. So let me give you a, a quick example of the worksheet. And again, this is, this is a very basic idea um, but I found that it worked really, really well. So let me just, so this is my Moodle course. So this is really what it looks like. Um, it's uh, a, a questionnaire that they would then log on. And I'll go through some of the questions just so that you can see the way that I designed it. Um, so the first one is what question or problem do you think the author is trying to answer? And they would type it in. Uh, what is the thesis of the text? Try to write the author's thesis in your own words. So I wanted them to sort of be able to interpret the argument um, in the text. Um, find and add three topic sentences from the reading that are used by the author to support the, her, his thesis. So again, I was interested in, 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 in the students engaging in the text in a way that um, made sense and scaffolded and, and that they were looking at ways in which, because one of the things that they're trying to learn in this, in this class is also um, writing about art. Um, so then it's looking at the way that other authors are writing, how do they use topic sentences, you know, that kind of thing to support their argument. Um, I do this thing where um, if they had to hashtag the reading, uh, what hashtags would you use? Um, and then I ask them to rank them in order of importance. So this is where the sort of more higher order thinking skills are coming in because they're having to evaluate, they're having to make judgments. Um, the hashtag thing really, you know, it's just a label, label the text, but they kind of understand it in a, in a little better way. And um, I think it helps them to conceptualize um, the reading. It's a way of, of essentializing and um, distilling the main ideas in a text in a way that they understand. So that kind of worked really well. Um, write down which artists were named the text, add them in order of importance. This is uh, um, one of the outcomes in the class is they, they have to be able to identify and characterize um, the main figures in, in the art world. So this kind of go, like, goes in line with that. Uh, research and briefly describe the work. Uh, Write down the 10 most important vocabulary words from this text, add them in order of importance. Uh, you'd be surprised, I'm, I'm, you wouldn't be surprised, you know. Uh, <laughs> main, you know, one of the texts is uh, titled The Crux of Minimalism. How many students looked up the word crux? None. It's like the main point of the text and nobody knew what the word crux meant. So that's why I added this, uh, you know, feature here. Um, and they have to define them. So. That's it. You know, they, they submit this. Uh, they uh, they then um, they do it every every night uh, before the reading is done. So what I then do 
is um, I gather the data gathered by by the. Oh, you know what? Let me do one thing because this goes out of um, full view. So I gather the data and then um, generate word clouds out of uh, the data that they've submitted. And then this, I bring them, I do this the morning of class. Um, I, I get, the, get the data and then I generate word clouds that are then used to um, uh, uh, spark the class discussion at the beginning of class. Um, so this way, this is done, um, this is using their own um, data, um, and uh, then we have class discussion in, in a variety of different ways. So for instance, the vocabulary word, they're supposed to rank them in order of importance. So ideally, in a, you know, all of the, the words that are the, the most important, they should all be getting the same sort of words, ideally. Um, so then we use the word cloud to say, in this vocabulary word cloud, does this accurately reflect, reflect the, the text? Let's discuss that. So then we break up into groups, they discuss it. Um, at the, we usually do that at the very beginning of the class. We discuss the reading, and then at the, at the end of the class, once they sort of have really kind of gotten into the argument of the text, we go back to the word cloud and say, is this accurate? Now they go, oh no, you know, this should be different. Um, so it really, really um, helps, I think, to put the student at the center of the discussion. So here are just a, a few of the word clouds um, that we use. So, and because I had different, different sections of data to input, um, I can use different word clouds. So this one, I think, was the, um, which this was the thesis. So the thesis that they all uh, re, um, reinterpreted and summarized, that I took all of that data and put it in here, and then we would talk about whether that reflected it accurately. Um, these are the hashtags. Um, this is the word cloud on the section that we do on semiotics. So we do a whole section on semiotics. Um, and uh, the hashtags were interesting because, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you why they're interesting. But there's a lot of uh, really kind of funny things that the students did in there. Um, so so that's, that's basically the way that, that I've done it. Um, results, I did it very, very... Uh, quick, small survey in my student evaluation. Um, one of the sections was, uh, one of the questions asked was the critical reading work helpful, agree or disagree, on a five point scale, 4.5 um, was the average. The students um, did seem to find it helpful. I also tried to do a, a, a other survey, but I wouldn't necessarily trust this data as much because I didn't get the full class to participate on it. Um, but the end, you know, it's, it's a, I don't trust it that much, but. Um, this tells me, you know, that the students generally were um, uh, finding it really helpful. Um, this one was interesting. Uh, I asked, on average, how much time did you spend on the, on the critical reading worksheets, including reading time? And the average was around three and a half hours. I don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, aver like, the average seemed, I probably think it's more like an hour or two. Um, but looking at, their, looking at the results, actually, when I was looking at, at what they were say, saying, they, I mean, it, it, they were engaging with, with the reading in a much more deep way than before. Um, and then the word clouds that were used at the beginning of class were helpful in starting class discussion. 100% of them agreed. Uh, you know, again, I don't know if we can trust that. But um, uh, two comments were just worksheets, worksheets were helpful. And then uh, keep the critical worksheets, one of the students said. So um, they seemed to really kind of... Uh, respond to it. Uh, changes that I would make in the future, uh, the Moodle questionnaire tool is very limited. Um, so I, I have a little bit of drawback between keeping everything integrated or actually having a more dynamic tool, because there's other things that I would have wanted to do that the questionnaire tool doesn't allow me to do. Um, for instance, show the student results after their own submission. I was really initially hoping that the students would submit their own data and then that everyone in the class could see everybody's information as sort of a study guide, but the questionnaire tool didn't allow me to do that. So things like that, I think I have to find a solution for. Um, I want to customize the worksheets for each reading, uh, because uh, I did a standard worksheet and use it for all the reading, but I think that there's other ways that I can um, customize them so that they're for specific readings. Uh, for instance, the, the text on semiotics, 
There's no artist mentioned in the text on semiotics. Uh, so that kind of thing um, was, was difficult. The hashtag, sometimes students said that they had difficulty coming up with a lot of, enough hashtags to fill the whole thing. Um, and then lastly, I would, I would probably create different types of visualizations, what I'm going to try to do next to help foster the, the class discussion. Um, the word clouds were great, but I used Taxedo to make the word clouds. And I'm not a computer programmer, so I don't exactly understand the way that the, the word clouds are made. And sometimes I don't think they're very accurate. So I would want to create other visualizations. So that's it.